On this episode of the Ritual Misery podcast, Kent took a trip to Wisconsin. Is that what Y stands for? Um, Amos took a trip to Podmove. Is that what the P O D M O V stands for? It's Podmove, and I was working. <laughs> and I've got a sick dog. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 288 for Tuesday, the 19th of October, 2021. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and we... Yes, we have heartbeats, we're alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so anyway. Hold on, hold on, let me check my pulse. Yes, yes, there is a that's, pulse. We that, are living. That's your liver. Oh, 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 well that's, that's not uh that's on life support <laughs> yeah. man we haven't had a show in three months how you doing brother uh i'm doing good i'm doing good staying busy doing a lot of work working a lot doing a lot of work for tom finally got my one of my old clients to pay me so now i can start working for her again and uh <laughs> that's always good yeah it's only been since april um and uh yeah just really staying very very busy i don't yeah. even know where the time goes anymore it's just crazy Oh my god! Yeah, twenty twenty one is like did 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 it even happen? I don't know. Like it's it's basically oh gone. It feels. Like. I saw a post the other day that said only seventy seven days left or something like that in in two thousand twenty one, you know, and and everybody was coming. Oh my god, is it that soon? Blah 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 blah. And this is in early October, and I'm sitting thinking that math doesn't add up. So I asked mm. my Echo device, and it ended up being like twelve days off or something like that. Like who? Like. You guys are just willing to repost fucking anything. <sighs> yeah, but still, like, like, okay, 77 days, even, you know, 12, plus or minus 12, 77 days left of the year. Are you kidding me? Like, we've gone yeah. this far into the year already. Yeah, we're that's double digit midgets as far as the year goes. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, you know what that means, though? It means we're if getting we're ready this for the streamathon. Far, Yes, if we're this far into the year, Streamathon's yep. right around the corner, and it is shaping up to be a doozy. Uh, yeah. So far, uh, let's see. We have um, who who can we confirm right now? Like so no, we no should actually we've got, confirm. We've got Tom Merritt and Sarah Lane this year in tech. We, yeah, we or have, not this year in tech. Uh, it'd be a, a yearly tech news show. Uh, it's it's the uh, good year internet. There you go. Look, I'm gonna fuck yeah. it up because because we've work got in Bryce Castillo. Uh, a couple hours of marbles coming your way. Yeah, and and this is gonna be a repeat from last year. I hope he was the record setting earner uh, yeah. for the for the New Year's Day streamathon, like in history. Yeah, uh, he shattered the record for an individual streamer, and he, um, he I'm shattered really the record for. He shattered the record for team. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. he raised more money during his stream last year than we raised as a team in any year prior. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm looking forward to that happening again. Yep. Um, we've also got the Have a Drink show. Yep. We yep. have Jen Cutter. Jen Cutter. She's going to come on and do some, uh, some game streaming and some uh, game news. Uh, kind of a year recap along with some streaming, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. We've got Big Voice J. Hell coming yeah! In, in the early, the early morning hour to get you guys going for the streamathon. Yeah, there's uh, there's no better way to start off your 27 hours than with uh, well, not with us. We we screw it up, but after us, it's Big Voice J <laughs> bringing you actual we... entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, and and the schedule's still filling up. We've got a lot yep. of shows that are um, like we we're we're gonna do it, but we haven't picked our time slot yet. So we've got a lot of stuff. We've, uh, a lot Ryan of stuff coming Ryan Ozawa, way. he's uh, he's been in tech for a long time, old friend of Tom's. He's gonna come on and do tech and or Hawaii and tech. Oh, so right on. Yes, a little yes. a little uh, Aloha coming in in the middle of the day. So that's going to be awesome. And uh, Jason Howell is going to be coming on. We just haven't firmed up that time yet, but he is that confirmed. That Jason Howell? Yeah. That from, Jason Howell? From oh. Buzz Out Loud, from Twit. Yeah, Jason Howell. 
Uh, so the, and and oh, yeah. we are about ninety percent sure we've got uh, TMS PM that's going to be on the show as well. So hell yeah, it's going to be right in their normal time slot yeah. too, if I understand it right. Yep. Where um yeah, it's a Friday show, so it's going to be right in their normal their normal um um. Uh, you know, right, flow, right yeah. there when 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 their audience expects them to stream, they're going to be yep. right there, um, raising money for extra life. So yep. it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty kick ass. We got we we're doing a tiered format this year as far as invites, and this is why because we wanted to try to get some big names in there and get them in their preferred slots because it's more likely that they'll be willing to participate if they can get the spot they want. And then we kind of go and we 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 scale it down from. Uh, the, the big names we like, we sent out invitations to people we knew we weren't going to get, and we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but some of them were yeses. Some of yeah, them, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a couple of people that were yeses that we didn't think would, would say yes. And then, uh, then we're going to go down the next tier are people that have been on the stream before that have been, that have raised money and made a major contribution to the streamathon, uh, either through content or through donations. And then after that, we are going to keep scaling down to people that have had had a good time, but maybe not raised a lot of well, money. You you say scaling down. I don't say scaling down. I say scaling over. Uh, we we've had some amazing streamers over the years. Mm. The thing that the thing that uh, that we're using this year it, that's different than last year's is metrics and yeah. like earners right the ones that that bring the the money to the children's miracle network yeah um and a lot of times that 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 really comes down to uh to the built-in audience so the uh how many followers you have on twitch uh, yep. that plays a big a big factor in that and it doesn't really speak necessarily to the quality of your stream or the quality right. of your content it's just the audience that you bring with you the more i mean it's, it's a numbers game right the more people that you bring with you the the more money you're going to raise for the kids and yeah. that's what we that's kind of how we set it up where the the you know round one invitations were uh to the folks that had the larger audiences and uh demonstrated earners like bryce and so forth. i was gonna say and, yeah and bryce yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, but anyway, so yeah. And, and as we go down the list, like it's just, we're just going to fill it in and, and it's gonna, just going to be, it's going to be an amazing show. The streamathon is always fun. Every yep. year it has been a blast and it's, we are set up to be, uh, this year, the best streamathon ever like by far, I think. It's so gonna be awesome. here's, here's one of the problems we we're running into right now that we didn't, we didn't think would happen. We start. We, we came up with this last year, like, hey, let's do like a metrics thing, you know, bigger audience, bigger earners, uh, people that have contributed, yep. you know, not just to the stream itself, but off camera to the stream and, and you know, done some of the background work that want to stream. Yep. Let's try to get, I mean, this is a numbers game, right? Like you said, we, we're trying to raise money. Like that's the whole goal is to raise money uh, to make sure that no one has to spend New Year's Eve alone. So... Mm -hmm. We need visibility for that. In order for the streamathon to grow, we need visibility. So we were like, you know what? This year we're going to start off setting our sights pretty high. Yeah, and we we're actually getting more of those high sights than we thought we would get. <laughs> so, so it's yep. definitely going to be a learning experience, and we're going to have to balance some things out. But we have uh, we have some people that are that are coming on um, that are just waiting for a spot because we need to get some of these these bigger uh, follower count and bigger potential earners into their spots um but yeah we have we we know we're gonna have some great people doing some great streams mm -hmm. and keeping things entertaining um and that's one of the big things is you may not have raised a lot of money in previous years but you brought a lot of fun to, to the party and that's what carries us through the lulls where there's not a lot of people watching to donate money oh yeah it's a 27 so, hour stream like yeah. it, it like you got to be a dedicated person to to get all the way through that yeah. so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah, even if you don't have a, a a large following if you've got an entertaining stream and you're part of the streamathon like you're going to carry the audience through to the end yeah so it's, exactly. it's super exciting and last year just in the last hour and a half we raised over a thousand dollars so it, yeah. yeah we started we started the year off at, at number one 
for like the first week of the year, we were number one on the charts over at Extra Life for 2021. Yeah. Yeah, because we because for because what is uh, extra life is it Pacific time? I think mm-hmm. Pacific time is when it switches over. Yep. So our our new campaign, so our campaign for twenty twenty two will begin at midnight Pacific time. Well, and as close to midnight as I can hit the refresh button and they load the page. Exactly. So yeah. so like at twelve oh two or whatever when our campaign campaign begins for the next yeah. year, we're still we've still got a few hours left of our stream of thought. Yep. So we're still raising money. So yeah, we are the number one <laughs> team on Extra Life for the first couple of hours of of the year. So it's pretty it's pretty awesome. Yep, and we bask in that glory. Um, Hell yeah! Hey dude, uh, I went to Podcast Movement in Nashville, and it was a blast. I got to meet uh, SP Stargate Pioneer in person. Yes, uh, I didn't yes. hang out with him much. COVID and everything else. I basically stayed with my core little group, which was. Uh, Christoph, uh, uh, his friend Amy, that became my friend, um, and uh, a couple of the people that you know, uh, Jen Briney was part of that 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 core group. Uh, Justin, nice. Robert Young, uh, Andrew Heaton, like that, those, the, like that was my core group of people that we hung out with the entire time, and mm-hmm. um, it was it was awesome. A lot of great, a lot of great people. A lot of great people. I still haven't emailed back because I suck at these, these things. <laughs> Um, yep. so, and I still have a feelers out to get Briny and Heaton on, on the new streamathon as well, but I, I, it's looking less and less likely. Um, great time though. A lot of, a lot of good information. Most, so I found out that if you want to be a presenter at a con, all you have to do is have a clever title. Oh, okay. You don't actually need substance. You just put a clever title in. And then about 15 hungover minutes before the presentation, you figure out what you want to say. Oh, wow. So this sounds more and more like RMP, like the more words you say. Yeah. Because our episodes tend to have really clever titles, but not a whole lot of content. <laughs> yeah. It's, so that, uh, by the end, that's what we were all, all talking about was like, man, like these titles are great. You go in there and it's just like, they have no clue what the hell they're talking about. They don't have visual aids. They don't. They they don't have a co- coherent thought. Like there's not yeah. a. And when you do strike gold, like when you get one that's actually like laid out and they have, you know, a, a set agenda, you start texting everyone else and telling them to join yours, and then suddenly like halfway through it gets really crowded, and then the presenter gets nervous because everybody just shuffled in, and then then you look like an idiot because you just called someone over, to see this present. It was, yeah. That's incredible. I think I would actually be good at at pod movement. Like I, because if, if, at least if if I have even just like an idea of what I'm going to talk about, as long mm-hmm. as I'm knowledgeable of the subject, I'm actually a pretty good live presenter. Yeah. Um. I, I don't present evidence of that so much on this show. <laughs> <laughs> because you said you knew the content when you do it in in a live setting. You don't know this content. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no idea. I have no idea what's going to happen on RMP. Uh, <laughs> Even after it happened, no idea. But no, put put me in put me in front of a, a live crowd with an idea of what I'm going to say. Like I'll, I'll keep your attention for an hour. Yeah. Um, I actually but, thought about applying to be a be a a, uh, a presenter next year. Oh wow! Oh yeah, my gosh! Why not? It's any a free ticket. Your, any idea what your topic would be? What are you talking about topic? I just need a title. I just explained this to you. Oh, that's you. right. Oh, my bad. I just bad. need a clever title. So, uh, yeah. All right. So we can probably <laughs> rely on, on chat realm to, to provide you with a title and then you yeah. just run with that. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, other than that, I've just been working. Yeah. I will be going to CES this year. It looks like I will be going to CES okay. this year, uh, as the tech core technical producer for DTNS. And so Rich technically Stockolino. next year, right? Technically yeah. well, next year, right? Because yeah. uh, it starts January third. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, Rich Straffolino will be there as the on-site host. Uh, I will be his tech support, running the streams and doing the production right. behind the scenes, uh, carrying the equipment around while he, you know, daintily walks around and smoozes <laughs> with people. Um, it's, it's really cool what? though because we're both into photography. So once we get done for the day and we don't have any more tasks, we can just wander around Vegas and take pictures. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Uh, no, that sounds that sounds freaking awesome. Uh, I've never been to CES, so this is going to be like, you know, 
super exciting for me. Yeah, I've, I've lived in Vegas, and I always thought about going to CES uh, because the, because all you need for a press pass is to say that you're press, and then mm. they give you a press pass. <laughs> not anymore. At least, that's, at least that's the way it used to be. Yeah, not anymore. And yeah, and I... Yeah, I actually, I I actually had it. to sign, send in a letter signed by Tom saying that I was going to be there for his company uh, and the, the podcast Daily Tech News Show. Sure, but like, are they checking Tom's credentials? Yeah, they'd already approved Tom. Okay, sure, but okay, but then how did Tom get approved? Uh, because he's somebody been approved, else. Because he's been approved the last fifteen years, and he was working for CNET when he first started getting approved for Tech TV, maybe. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So I'm think so I'm thinking if years ago if I had gotten an approved press pass, that it would just would have been grandfathered all the way up to today. Like, oh yeah, you're a known quantity. Like, no, you're, you, you held a press pass before. Like, look, look between the five of us, between Roger, Tom, Sarah, uh, Rich, and I. I was the only one that got mine within three days. Everyone else had to go through and double check and double check and double check. Tom never had to submit anything, but it took him like a week and a half to get his. Sarah took almost mm. three weeks. Roger took almost three weeks. And Rich, last time I checked, was still waiting for his. Oh, dang. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, <clears throat> I don't know who's doing what over there, but it's not as easy as <laughs> signing a little memorandum with the letterhead saying, hey, I work for myself. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, well, back when it was that easy, that that was like fifteen years ago or something. So yeah, yeah who knows now? Um, so I didn't do anything as exciting as as uh, Vegas, unless you, you did go to see uh, uh, Sergeant Muffin and see his arcade, and you didn't take any fucking pictures, so it didn't actually happen. It didn't actually happen. Didn't happen. Um, yeah. So I realized. All right. So. Steph and I went to Wisconsin. Uh, her family is from Wisconsin, and we went and did a, an amazing family thing. Um, it was great. It was great. If you guys have never been to Wisconsin, like I, I recommend going there just just once, and and you will. Uh, I don't even know. I don't know what you will have to take away from it uh, because I don't know what you're bringing to the table. Um, but the things that I take away from Wisconsin, uh, first of all, I live in a desert, so I go yeah. to Wisconsin and everything's fucking green <laughs> and everything's fucking beautiful. <laughs> so, so there's that, uh, there's water everywhere. Uh, one of the things that we lack in New Mexico is water and there's water absolutely freaking everywhere. Uh, <laughs> enough water. In fact, that we could go out several days on a pontoon boat and have a wonderful time on the lake. Um, it was it was absolutely amazing. Uh, just the nature, uh, be, being around family, going a couple hours down the road and hanging out with Sergeant Muffin uh, was absolutely a wonderful time. Um, again, that never happened. There's no photographic evidence. So... I imagined apparently that I went to Sergeant Muffin's place and uh, went to his pinball arcade and had the time of my freaking life. Um, but again, that never actually happened. <laughs> this is why you suck at life. Yeah. Yeah. We, we actually re we realized as soon as like Steph and I got back into the car and we started driving out of the neighborhood and I was like, Oh, we didn't take any pictures. And Steph was like, "Oh, no, we didn't." <laughs> and then I, that was it. I almost did that when I was visiting uh, BBJ in Nashville. Uh, almost mm. left without taking pictures, and it was like, "Oh shit, okay, let's go ahead and do this picture thing real quick." We did the picture, and then it was like, "All right, my Uber's here." <laughs> oh like, yeah. Like, well, I, hey, at least you got it. Yeah. Which is I, crazy because I'm usually like when we go to South by or Nertacular or what have you. Yeah. I'm the guy that like I demand like I got to get a selfie with you. I have to get a selfie with you. Like I heard your name once. I need a selfie with you. Yeah. I think I thought I saw you in, before in my chat. Life. Yeah. Yeah. I need a selfie with you. And I, just for whatever reason, I got there and it wasn't like I didn't see it as an event. Like when I got there, it was it was like, you know. 
like going to a friend's house. Right. You know, you don't start taking selfies when you go to a friend's house, typically. Maybe that's you your problem. Maybe you need more and, selfies with friends. Yeah, that's yeah. You're not wrong about that. Uh, but but yeah, like I'd never met Sergeant Muffin in person before this this past Wisconsin trip. Uh, but it was it was that like I've known him for so long, like virtually. Yep. I've known him for so many years at this point. Like when I finally went and met him in real life, it didn't feel like I was meeting him for the first time. Right. So I think that's probably like where my mindset was. Uh, but it was amazing. It was, it was fantastic. Sergeant Muffin is every bit as cool as you think he is and probably even more so. Um, he's, he's fantastic. He's a great, great guy. On the flip side, you did have some less good news. Yeah. So a few weeks ago, um, yeah, probably about three weeks ago at this point, three, three and a half weeks ago, uh, we found out that our dog Simon has lymphoma, which means that he doesn't have a whole lot of time left with us. So we're probably looking at a year or less of time, uh, with one of our dogs. Um, it's really odd. So it was caught during a normal, uh, routine vet visit, just a, mm -hmm. just a checkup. Like we were bringing the dogs for their annual vaccines and just normal checkup and his lymph nodes were enlarged. So the doctor was concerned and took a sample and sent it off to the lab, and then we got the results back, and it turned out to be lymphoma. Uh, you wouldn't know that the dog is sick, though. You wouldn't know. Like, Simon yeah. is just as energetic, and, like, we, we sometimes call him Tigger because of the way he jumps. He This dog loves to jump straight up in the air. And I don't know if any of you have lived in the Southwest, but here we've got walls like literal like brick walls brick around walls. our yards down here yeah and uh whenever our neighbors are in the yard simon wants to know what's going on next door so he jumps straight the freak in the air like no no kidding like seven or eight feet in the air so that he can see what's happening next door and that hasn't changed even literally today he was doing that um so he's still just as energetic uh, his appetite's good. Everything's, everything seems good. Um, but unfortunately we've got that knowledge that, um, uh, this, uh, this disease probably is going to take him from us prematurely. Um, uh, so, yeah. you know, that's, uh, that's unfortunate and it's a, it's a bummer, uh, but you know, on the bright side, we're, we're going to do what we can to make whatever time he's got left, um, as good as possible. So, you know, he's going to get just lots of love for the next, Oh, I don't know. He's probably going to live like the next five years. So he's just going to get a, f you know, five years of just extra loves and treats. And, um, we're just you know, lucky to have him here. It's been 13 so, years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like, it's like my grandpa that was diagnosed with yeah. a, a heart failure condition. And, Oh, he's got like four months to live. Yeah, dude lived like seven more years. So yeah. like we uh, celebrated grandpa's life for like forever until he died. Um, so but anyway, so uh, I I mean yeah. I joke, but um it's a it's a serious thing, but um we're gonna we're gonna I don't know, we're gonna make the best of it. We're gonna yep. make Simon as happy as we can. All right. So tonight our main topic. Yes, that was a great transition. <laughs> uh, our main topic tonight is new gadgets. Hang new on, hang stuffs. on. You're skipping. You're skipping. You're How skipping. How am I skipping? Something. How am I skipping? I've got a I've got I've got something to oh. lead into this. Oh, you actually have a thing? I do have a thing. Well then let's do that thing. Okay. All right, so so this week. It's not a game so much as a bit. Uh, so I'm cheating a little bit. So I'm calling it Quick Hits. Uh, I found five news items today that okay. I want 
I want a quick take. Now, now this is not hot takes. This is not uh, drawing from our our previous. So old old school listeners does listeners of RMP will know what I'm talking about. Um, we're not going back to hot takes. This is kind of a a first impressions sort of thing. So when I when I say uh, the topic, you're going to tell me what you think about it, and I'll tell you what I think about it, and then we're moving to the next topic. So there's no set time limit. It's basically just just be quick about it. I'll get. I'll be quick about it, and then we'll move to the next topic. Are you ready? Okay. I am. What do you think about Apple's nineteen dollar polishing cloth? I think I'm eagerly looking forward to Lamar Wilson's unboxing of it. I'm sure he will give it a proper tear down, maybe even I fix it <laughs> style, and really get into what makes it so special and what 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 what, what I mean, what kind of power they got in there. Okay. Yeah. So I, man, what the fuck? Like, you know, I love Apple. I'm an Apple fanboy, but come on, man. Like this is feeding right into the stereotype of Apple just being the premium, like they're premium because they charge more like brand. Um, Shipment dates are slipping. So somebody's fucking buying it. (laughs) Dude, I know. I know because people buy into that hype, dude. Like this is just a fucking lint free cloth. Like get the fuck out of here. $19. Stop it. It used to come uh, free hey, with MacBooks, but, hey, but whatever. But hey, uh, oh no, it still comes free with, with, with iPhones because I got one just uh, a week or two ago. Um, dude, come on. But hey, but hey, more power to Apple if you get people to buy this shit. Yep. $19 for a fucking lint free cloth. All right, next topic. Dog size sea scorpion. Do you know about this? No. So they that's that's, they that's also scientists. that's also my remarks. No. <laughs> All right, that's not far off from what I thought you would say. So scientists have found re- remains of of an ancient creature uh, that's it's basically a scorpion. It's an arachnid that's basically a scorpion uh, that's the size of a dog. So think of a German Shepherd sized scorpion. Nope, running around. Um, Oh, and it, and it basically terrorized the sea. So, so it wasn't um, that much of a threat on land, as far as we know yet. Uh, but yeah, what what would you do if you came around the corner? Uh, you're 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 messing around outside. You're I don't know. You you just got finished mowing the grass. I don't know. You're coming around the shed, and there's a German Shepherd side scorpion. What what what's your first move there? Uh, run inside, grab shotgun. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much on par with with my reaction. I, I would just nope the fuck out. Yeah. All right, hey, uh, there's a new trailer for the upcoming movie, The Batman. Did mm-hmm. you watch that? I did. What did you think? As an introduction to the movie, I liked it. As a trailer, not so much. I think it gave a little bit too much of the middle away. I, I don't like them to do that. So. Um, but I like okay. the th- thematics of it. I like how it's in beat with uh, the music, and I like how it's uh, yes, it's like the 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 coloring, and of course, it's you know it's practically black. So um, I, I don't know. I I didn't mind it at all. It, it, I think it gave away a little bit more of the middle than I would like, but it didn't give enough away that I could already know the story. So that's what I thought of it. I give it yeah, one thumbs so- up. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, I, yeah, I liked the trailer a lot. I thought that the, you know, I, well, I think that the movie looks great. I'm, I'm very eager to watch the movie. Um, it's got like the, the, this is my Batman, you know, like I, cause I, I'm a lifelong Batman fan. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, when you, you and I met in high school and I was already an avid collector of comics at that time. And you know, that like the, the, by far the number one comic book, character for me was batman um and still is Uh, i as much as i love my marvel uh batman's my guy yeah and the batman that i really really love is the the darker grittier batman and this really uh, uh, gave it to me it was like when they said you know who are you so think about like the 1989 batman you know who are you and then Michael Keaton grabs the guy and says, I'm Batman. Well, Batman. they kind of play off of that. 
yeah, they kind of play off that. Like, who are you? And then his answer was, I am vengeance. It's like, oh, fuck yeah. And yeah. and he says that right after he just beat the living fuck out of a bad guy. Yep. Um, so that's my Batman. Uh, so I'm excited about that. But also, as you alluded to, the trailer was artfully crafted. I, these are my favorite trailers of, of all time. The ones that sync the action of the trailer with the music and the sound effects and, Which and, and all of that. When I you, find when ironic. You sync the video and the sound. Oh, I find best. that ironic because you hate smash cut YouTube videos so much, but by by default, anytime you sync music to a to a preview, it's going to be basically smash cut because you know no. it's constantly just no 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 no, no. no that's art that's art smash cut <laughs> YouTube videos are trash. Uh, <laughs> those aren't. It's a, art. it's a distinction without much of a difference. <laughs> <laughs> smash cut, smash cut YouTube videos are are lazy editing. That's not art. Um, anyway, What's next? next topic: Diver finds Crusader sword. Did you see this one? So, an Israeli scuba diver found a, a Crusader era sword in the ocean. It was about a nine hundred year old iron sword that was about three feet long. Uh, he was just diving, just. Just look it around as you do when you dive and literally found, the purpose of diving. <laughs> yeah. Found found a freaking sword, a long sword from from a thousand years ago. Um, how amazing of a find would that be? I'm glad you said Crusader and not Knights Templar sword or something crazy shit like that. I mean, I could have said that. Like, you, you want to, you want to go down the rabbit hole. You want to go. <laughs> that, that, there's a big difference between your average crusader and a knight templar. Um, That's right. Yeah. So at least they're not. At least they're not trying to throw that kind of categorization on it. They're just saying, yeah, it's a crusader sword because it's from the time frame. Probably, you know. I think this stuff is cool, man. I I love to mo- lo- learn more about history, and every little bit adds to our collective knowledge. Um, if we can just figure out a way to look past the younger Dryas and see what really happened. <laughs> uh, Bob Callie in the chat wants to know, was it thrown by a watery tart? <laughs> it might have been. It might. Uh, we, we have, we don't have any, any visual confirmation on the watery tart, uh, but uh, possibly more to come on that. Oh my God. If, they, if, <laughs> if, it, if there, if there's a skeletal, if there's the skeletal remains of a woman about a hundred feet away, you know, 80 to a hundred feet away. And like, she just, she has like, you know, just, I, I don't know. Like you can just tell that she's just a bratty, a <laughs> bratty woman. Tell, you can just you tell know? from her remains that she's a watery tart. Yeah. Uh, like that would just, Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. It had to rename it from the, uh, the, the crusader sword to the, to the uh, uh, Monty Python sword. <laughs> All right. So my fi- my final my final item um, I I took from a, a personal thing today. Uh, do you know what a headache rack is? I can't say that I do. Although maybe I don't. This was a new thing to me. So. Mm-hmm. It's unfortunate how I learned of this. I got an Amber Alert on my phone, uh, and so I'm hope you know. Hopefully, uh, the 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 child was returned home safely. Um, however, uh, you know how like, we've all gotten Amber Alerts on our phones, right? Like we know, like they they give a description of the vehicle if there's a vehicle involved, you know, and like mm-hmm. you know who who is suspected to have taken the child, whatever. <sighs> So the, exactly the vehicle was about. described the vehicle was described as a pickup truck with a headache rack. Yep. I thought it was a typo. Nope. I had to google it to figure out what it is. So you you apparently are familiar with a headache rack. Could you describe to to everyone what is a headache rack a headache rack is well it's a certain model of a brand of uh, racks that go on trucks but a lot of them will have overhangs on the sides 
it became a generic term for any rack that goes on top of a truck that has anything hanging over the sides because you forget about it. You stand up and bam, you smack your head. Um, although I think the original one was just basically a window. They covered the back window, mounted onto the bed and had a little yeah. thing that went over the top of the cab. Yeah. So, so that's what I discovered was that it was, as you just described, the, it goes behind the, uh, you know, behind, behind the back window of, of a truck cab. Yeah, a pickup truck cab. Mouth um, to the bed. And in the apparently the origin of the term headache rack is that it basically so when like if you're you know using a pickup truck like their intended use, it's mm. a utility vehicle. Uh you're hauling a bunch of like contracting materials and, and so forth. And if you like slam on the brakes real quick, like a bunch of that shit like has the potential to crashed through the back window of the cab and, and like yep. knock your head off or, 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 you know, hit you in the head and whatever and cause a fucking headache. Uh, and this rack is there to prevent that from happening. So right. we got the term headache rack. I learned that that's brand new information for me today. I was like, what? Like I, I, I seriously thought it was a typo. You've, and you've never owned a pickup truck though, right? I have. I had an S10 for many years. Now, granted, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. It ain't a fucking F350 or some shit. It's not some uh, dually whatever. But to compare to somebody who's never had a pickup truck com- and then compare that person to somebody who's had an S10, the person that's had an S10 has had a fucking pickup truck. I have helped and- more people move than I care to even fucking try to remember. That sounds like a you problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's the curse. That's the curse of the owner of a pickup truck is that Not, uh, you like you get roped into you, to helping people move, or you have to tell people, "No, sorry, I don't do that." Which I, I'm sure I what find you know. I I have the line in the middle. I have the line in the middle. If you want help moving, that's fine. I don't load. I don't unload, and you don't drive. Yeah, I will park my truck. Right. You will yep. throw your shit yep. in the back of the truck. I will drive it to your destination. You will unload it, and I will go the hell home with yep. a six pack yep. in my passenger yeah. seat. <laughs> That's how this is going to work. Yeah. So it's not the worst philosophy on that. It's it's the one that's worked for me. Mm. Yeah, I don't I don't like people driving my truck, and I don't mind helping you move, but I'm not lifting shit because I got a bad back, and nobody's driving my truck because it's my precious. So <laughs> that's. Precious. That is what it is. Yeah. My truck is not coming back from helping you move with, with a gash in the leather. <laughs> you said gash. Um, <clears throat> all right. So t- so as you said earlier, tonight's main topic is new gadgets. So we're going to talk about some things that we have acquired over the last three months since our last show. And um, and then maybe some gad- some gadgets that have come out that maybe we don't own, but we still want to talk about. I'm going to go ahead and start off with iPhone 13 Pro. Hmm. I did um, I did go ahead and upgrade. I had the iPhone 10. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just showed my, uh, showed my notifications to the world. Um, anyway, so I had the iPhone 10. You just doxed yourself. Has it really been four years since the iPhone 10 came out? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to know how much of a difference is it between the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 13? Right. So that was, you went from a 10 was... to a 13 Pro. Exactly. Yes. I, I went from the 10 Pro. to the Pro Max, 12, 12 Pro Max. Yeah. So, so I, I don't go Max because I want the motherfucker to fit in my pocket. It's because you got and, small legs. And the, the, the Mac, all the Max series are, ba- they're basically iPad minis. Uh, they're gigantic, dude. They are freaking gigantic. Like, hold hold up your phone. You got you got a Max right now. Hold that yeah. phone up. Jesus, look at that thing. That is uh that's an iPad Mini. <laughs> um. Anyway, so yeah, so going from an iPhone 10 to an iPhone 13 Pro, uh, the battery life is absolutely incredible i went from charging my phone minimum twice a day like making sure i was able to plug it into something twice a day Mm -hmm. uh to 
I'll go two days. Like I will go, like I will use it like pretty heavily, like listening to podcasts for half the day, uh, playing games on it. Uh, not to mention like, you know, texts and phone calls and so on and so forth. Uh, I will go like all day long and I'll be at like 60% or something like that. I won't even charge it when I go to bed, get it the next day. And it's like, if I, if I set it down at 60%, it's 59% when I get up the next day after yep. eight hours of sleep. Uh, and then I'll go like a whole other day and then I'll just, I'll, I'll charge it at bedtime on the, the second day. Uh, it's like the battery life is absolutely freaking incredible. Uh, the response time, like the speed of the, the processor and the, the, uh, probably the, the memory, like how much it can do, um, all at once. And, and as, as quickly as it does, like it's, it's such a leap, uh, past the 10, uh, the 10 was an amazing piece of hardware when, when we got it four years ago. Uh, but this thing is like this, this thing is next level. Um, another thing about the, the 13 pro is the camera set that it's got. I've only barely begun to play with the camera. I will tell you that the few snapshots that I've taken are yeah. absolutely incredible. I have yet to play uh, play with it where, because this thing can take like macro shots and, uh, all like all kinds of like next level photography shit that the 10 just like dreamed that it could do. Um, I have yet to, to try any of that. And I will report on that when I do go down that road. Um, uh, but it is, it's like so far, like this thing is, it's, it's basically my iPhone 10. Uh, but just like, leveled up it's Newer. just my iphone 10 leveled up <laughs> yeah well i mean the, there's that too like it's just yeah you know it's 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 clean it's just like everything is like just refreshed i will say uh, that the only big difference i noticed um yes <laughs> bob Kelly in chat says it sounds like something you need that 19 dollar cloth to clean um or i could just use the one that came with my iphone 13 pro <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it works just fine. Uh, my my tw my ten to twelve Pro Max experience was I like the bigger screen, uh, much better battery life, and um, that's it. Well, I mean the camera's yeah. a little better, but really there's there's no no big difference. It, but I didn't expect a big difference. I only only upgraded because it was free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I switched carriers. Oh yeah. Oh well. Okay, so. So I stayed with my carrier, which is Verizon, mm -hmm. and I got a gigantic. So that's another thing about the the iPhone 13 series, is the discount that they're giving you for trade ins mm -hmm. is insane. Yeah, I got I got almost six hundred dollars from my iPhone 10 trade in as credit. So I I only spent. Well, I I, I chose the monthly installment thing. Yep, and I think I only spent like. I don't know, 400 and something dollars on the iPhone 13 pro upgrade. Yeah. Like what the hell? Like everybody's like, Oh, it's like, it's $1,100. Well, if you got hardware to turn in, yeah, maybe I, not. Like I got, I got an $850 credit for mine and it came out to 1199. So it cost me about $300. Yeah. 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 So that's, yep. that's yeah. It's all right. Uh, tell me about this Fire Stick TV, Fire TV Stick 4K. I don't own a Fire. Well, I do have a Fire Stick, one of the original ones. Um, yeah. How's it compared to the uh, to the Apple? Yeah. All right. So typically, I've just used Apple TV uh, for for my streaming needs. Uh, for because you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of the smart TV OSs and whatnot. Um, right. I am biased for Apple. You know, I am a bit of an Apple fanboy, so I do like the the environment and everything just works. Like if I logged into my phone into um, uh, Netflix or what have you, I, I turn on my Apple TV and it just – everything just works. That's yep. the beautiful thing about Apple ecosystem. Um, so I never had any other devices. I have a, an older TV that doesn't have an – uh, it doesn't have like um, uh, USB ports and things like that. So I was like, you know what? I, I want to use this in my clubhouse. 
uh, it's like my second garage. It's like kind of where it's where I have my dartboard. It's where my right. my beer fridge is and stuff like that. I was like, you know what? I, I've got a TV out there, but I've got really nothing to uh, to do with it. I'd really like to have a, a cheap like you know streaming stick to throw on there, so I can just kind of play with it. Well, this last week, Amazon started its Black Friday ish sales, mm-hmm. and they. Like so many products are discounted on Amazon right now, especially the Amazon branded items, right? So Echo devices and Fire TVs and all this other kind of stuff. And I was like, well, let me look at the 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 Fire TV sticks or Fire what is it called Fire Fire Stick Fire Fire, Fire TV TVs. Stick 4K. That's what that's what it was. Um, anyway, so I was like, oh my god! So this thing is normally fifty bucks. I got it for thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm like, yeah, let, let me give this thing a shot. So I uh, plugged it into my old ass TV, uh, turned it on. It was already because I ordered it through Amazon. Already linked. Uh, it's already like hooked up to my account. So I like I'm already in Amazon Prime like automatically. Yep. Um, like all all of my all of my app like everything just like everything just worked. It's just not quite as it just works as Apple. But it ain't far bef- behind. Like the yeah. Amazon ecosystem is is another like really comfortable environment, and uh, I, I'm really enjoying the the Fire TV stick. Uh, it's it's fantastic. The the TV that I have is not 4K, <laughs> so I'm not even using it to its potential. Um, but it's like it's fantastic. Like it's got almost all the same functionality as an Apple TV. For a fucking fraction of the price, um, the the thing's great. Uh, I just loaded up a new account today. Actually, uh, my son bought the the NBA season pass, mm. and he had uh, two device authorization, so he threw me the login for that, and I loaded that thing up, and it took like no time. Um, it was great. Like everything's everything's great. I I really I really dig the Fire TV stick. Nice, nice. It might be worth worth trying out now. I know before the Fire Stick came out about the same time as the Apple TV came out, or Apple TV 2, really, because uh, Apple mm. TV 1 was... Anyway. Ish. Um, it was ish. <laughs> it, was, it was mid. Um, so, uh, yeah, it might be might be time for me to try it out again just just to see what the other it's side is. It's 30 bucks sees. right now. Yeah. It's 30 bucks right now. Get after it. Yeah. All right. How about uh, Ray-Ban Stories? Okay. Have you heard about this thing? Yeah. Uh, Ray, Tom has Ray-Ban Tom has glasses. a pair and he's he's used them a few times on the show. He got Ray-Ban the prescription glasses. ones. Yeah. So Ray Ray Ban glasses. So Ray Ban quality brand, right? Mm-hmm. Um I, I think I think most of our audience knows that like ninety eight percent of sunglasses companies are actually one company. Ninety eight percent of all eyeglasses companies in America are the same oh, company. That, that, yeah, that's actually yeah, that yeah, accurate. Uh, yeah, there's, there's basically one company that, that, that does glasses anyway. So the Ray-Ban brand, mm-hmm. uh, teamed with Facebook, mm-hmm. uh, to come out with it with smart glasses. Um, I smart from what glasses. I, well, yeah. Okay. So, uh, connected glasses. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure what we're going to call it. That, so that might, that might be better. It's a wearable device. So it's, it's glasses. Um, in this case, it's sunglasses. Well, it it can be clear lenses, I guess. So it's glasses yeah. uh, that has cameras and internet connectivity and Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi and so on and so forth. Um, these things, from a distance of more than like six feet, look exactly like any other pair of sunglasses. Yep. Uh, so. Cool gadget. So first of all, let me say cool gadget, cool gadget. So it basically took the concept of Google Glass, uh, made it a thing that that people will actually wear. Um, so two, so two things. First of all, it's Facebook. Uh, I'm just skeptical about anything Facebook, mm-hmm. uh, which hurts my soul because I have an Oculus Quest Two, <laughs> which is absolutely. Fucking amazing! I love that thing, but it's Facebook. Um, but it's Facebook. 
you have to be logged into Facebook to use the device. Yep. And the same thing with Ray-Ban stories. Okay, so the Facebook aspect, not a fan of. Um, second of all, me as a security professional, somebody who has to think about devices that come into secure spaces and how to prevent them from coming in and how to look out for them and how to inform other people to look out for them and all that right. sort of stuff. Uh, Ray-Ban Stories uh, presents a particular challenge because it is a device that looks like any, you know, just a, just normal ass device. Right. Uh, you were talking about, about Tom having prescription glasses lenses in this thing. Um, if I didn't look closely enough or I didn't, you know, if I, if I don't take a, a second up close glance, I'm not going to know that you've got cameras and that yeah. you've got Bluetooth connectivity and Wi-Fi connectivity and everything. So else your problem on. with them is the fact that they blend in so well. Yes. It's, it's a, it's a neat factor and also a problematic factor to me. Yeah. But I mean, that's the, uh, that's a, that's a rabbit hole though, because you know, yeah, but, and it's yeah. just going to get it's just going to get worse from yeah. here on out. Like it's yep. going to be like there's already uh, patents pending for for prototypes of contact lenses that do the exact same shit. Right. Like there are already working models of contact lenses. So if I'm not gonna if I'm not gonna notice the little fucking little tiny cameras on the corner of your glasses. How the fuck am I going to notice something on a contact lens? Yep. L like that. So what this means is the, me the security, security professional, the security professionals are just going to have to get more sophisticated in their detection methods is what that comes down to. It's, <sighs> it's, it's part of the arms race. And right now the, well, from the public eye, from the public perspective, the, uh, the, the, the people that are going through the trouble to hide cameras are, getting ahead of the people that are trying to detect cameras. Now, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes to counter that, that topic, but it's, it's going to be an arms race forever. And you're because of an open market, yeah. you're never going to stop it. So for sure, uh, for yes. sure. But, but this, this represents Ray-Ban stories represents a leap, uh, from, from a con consumer perspective, it represents a leap in that, in that race, because it is, yeah. like you said, it's always, you know, yep. what one one's ahead of the other continuously, um, but Ray-Ban stories presents a, a leap on yep. the other side. Um, All right. Yeah. So um, I have two uh, two things I want to talk about. Two new acquisitions. One is my Mac Mini with the M1. I didn't. Uh, I I went and bought one. It's got uh, the 16 gigs of RAM. It's got the one terabyte hard drive. Those are the only upgrades I did to it. It is stellar. It is amazing. I already had a Mac Mini down in Washington where my wife lives. Uh, the cheapest model they had just to throw a computer in there. So if I'm there visiting or whatever else, then I could just work from there and everything syncs over because it's all Apple. Um, mm. I have uh, never heard the fan come on even when editing 4K video. Mm. I have never had a like connectivity problems or anything else. It's been stellar. The only problem I have with it is the dongle warfare uh, because there just aren't enough ports on the back of it. Ah, that, that, okay. That's that's a common thing with all uh, first gen M1 Max. They, none of them had enough ports. Now that the M1 Pro and M1 Max are coming out, uh, there's a lot more ports and a lot more ability for that thing, you know, more screens, all that kind of stuff. But it's only in the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch and they start out at $2,000, not in the market. Um, so when, when they came out with the new MacBook or when they came out with the new Mac mini with the upgraded chips and the more ports, that might be something that I'm looking into. But, uh, for right now, this thing has been rock solid. It's barely warm to the touch right now. And like I said, I've never heard the fans come on once and I've never seen it bogged down. It's pretty freaking amazing. Um, nice. The other thing I want to talk about is this. Uh, that looks like an Xbox controller. What is that? This is actually the Nintendo Switch Pro wireless controller. Oh, okay. Um, certain person coming up soon has a birthday, and the decision was made to get them a Switch Lite. Uh, so I can't be the 
tech support and father that uh, I'd like to be if I'm not available to play and to help troubleshoot and understand the system. Um, and also the parental controls, things like that require certain aspects of it. So <laughs> this I sounds like ahead. an excuse. This sounds like an excuse. Uh, well, so here's the thing. <laughs> See what had happened was I get fully justified getting a light for myself, except some accessories don't work with it. And my hands are too big to, for the controls. They're just, mm. it's too big. Mm. Okay. So I was going to get a full size so I can make sure that I had all the capabilities with the controllers and everything else. Like I didn't want to be, you know, messing with that shit. Mm. But if I'm going to spend that much money on the full size, why not just get the new one that just came out last week and get the OLED screen? So I got the OLED screen. <laughs> of course you did. Of course you did. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I've been playing Breath of the Wild and it is, um, I always wondered if Breath of the Wild was worth the purchase of a Nintendo Switch just on its own. Mm -hmm. I now know that it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good to know. It's, okay. It's, the game is ridiculous. It's super fun. It's got, it's, it's, yeah. Oh my God. It's so awesome. It's amazing. Um, I'm only sad that I didn't. I I didn't. Uh, I guess I'm not as sad that I didn't get it sooner. I'm. Because uh, you're enjoying it now. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah. Breath of the Wild, highly recommended. Uh, three thumbs up. <laughs> oh. 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 You say I only have two thumbs? That's... Not if I hold my hands down far enough in my lap. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's that's maybe a problematic comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is problematic in my mind. Uh, well, then you shouldn't be thinking about these things. That's your that <laughs> that sounds like a you problem. Oh <laughs> uh, shit! Uh, if you if if people want to see your three thumbs, where would they where would they possibly go for that? Only fans. <laughs> Only fans. Dot com slash. Oh, that's right. We didn't set that up yet, did we? No, we don't. We haven't hit the patron level yet. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. my God. So no, we have instead, a they level should go to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Amos, what will they find there? Uh, well, first of all, you'll be completing one of the steps in the quest to get us an OnlyFans. That's <laughs> to bring it back to the Zelda. Uh, yeah, you you got to complete the preliminary see tasks. Amos's three thumbs. Yeah, my three thumbs. Um, you know, you'll find a bunch of, uh, of uh, back catalog content, some extra content, some expanded episodes. Uh, even if you yep. dig back far enough, you will find some never otherwise released videos and um, even some unedited interviews we did with uh, certain internet celebrities' moms. Yep, 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 yeah, totally that. Uh, thing, things in the archives like Amos and me, when we were less than half our current ages, uh, pretending oh, to play my God. instruments. So... Uh, so it's, <laughs> we did Inner Sandman and they just released the 30th anniversary of the Inner Sandman or of the Black Album, but yep, you can't yep. find it on iTunes if you look for it directly. If you go into Metallica, it's not listed as an album, but if you go in the Black Album in, in uh, Apple Music, you go and hit that uh, Black Album, then you scroll all the way down to the bottom. The first album as a related album is the remastered version of Black. Uh, uh -huh. It's like, I don't know why it's hidden like that, but it pisses me off every time I go to listen to it. <laughs> uh, anyway, where can they find you, dude? Um, well, man, see, that's tough. Um, Nowhere I'm kind right of a, now. I'm kind of, a, I'm kind of a, a social media ghost at the moment. Uh, but if you want to be there when I reemerge, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. There you go. And in the meantime, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. Yep. Um, and at Ritual Misery to follow the show and uh, get follow... notices when we get live. Yeah, exactly. That. And the yep. new format is we are going to record when we have a chance to because the summer is still kind of crazy and things just haven't smoothed out yet, but we want to start recording again. So really follow the uh, Ritual Misery account or follow us on Twitch and you will get notifications when we go live. Um, yeah, so that's that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, 
Well, in, in bit.ly slash RMP Discord, if you really want to know, like, the up to the moment, we're, we're, we're going to do a show today kind of thing, um, hit us up there. Uh, join us on Discord. Join the conversation. It's uh, it's a good time, and it is the best way to be up to date on everything we're doing. Yep. Um, meanwhile, we're getting out of here, man. For Kent, for you, for me, we are celebrating Kevin McLeod's music. <laughs> this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y